This is co-creator Sophie Kaner. And I promise we'll get to the episode in just a minute, but I wanted to let you know what's coming up next. In two weeks, we'll start releasing the multi-part Second Citadel season finale, which will be coming out weekly. If you're a Patreon supporter, don't worry, we will only be charging you for every other episode, so you won't be paying more than you anticipated. As for today's episode, well, remember to check the trigger warnings, as always, and if you're listening early, please, please don't spoil it for anyone else. We'll see you on the other side. Ah, good evening, traveler. And welcome to the Penumbra. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. The junction lies ahead, so if you'll allow me just a moment. We are now passing through Newtown. Our next stop, Juno Steel and the Soul of the People. You know, I've spent most of my life feeling like I'm supposed to be somewhere else. I don't think I'm the only one, either. Finding your way forward in this galaxy is like taking driving directions from a busload of screaming kids. The right stuff gets drowned out, and no matter what you do, everyone, including you, just ends up miserable and lost. But sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you find one voice that cuts through the rest. One voice that speaks the truth nobody else will say. Accessing Memories It doesn't matter why you right your wrongs any more than it matters why I want to clean this city. Soon we'll be dead, and corpses don't have motives. The why dies with us. But what we do, what we make, that stays. And I know you and I could make something very special, Detective. Even at the time, that was the first thing I'd heard in decades that actually really made sense. But the old man's dead now. He's not making anything else, and that means if I want to keep him around, I have to protect what he left behind. Newtown, the Thea soul, his vision of the future. I miss him so much. Every version of me can agree on that. Even if the soulless one couldn't say it. Your attention seems split, user Juno Steel. Would you like me to help with that? Yeah, thanks. Remember, your name is Juno Steel. The tower is your home, and if you do not capture this target before the tower falls, the future falls with it. Right. The target Rita has already worked the virus into the tower all souls connect to. As I run, I see my fellow citizens collapse, watch their souls shrivel off them, and I know the only way to save them is to find the target and make her fix this. Make Make her her see things things our way. way. Luckily, I have just the thing for her. One last Theosol. This false assertion. You shut up too. In truth, several of user Juno Steel's muscles and ligaments tore soon after activating accelerated speed without their recovery supporting. Therefore, current speed is only 50% of amplified maximum. I said shut up. Okay then, I'll see you at the chief's office. Bye bye, Mr. Aluminum! Which, by the way, is funny because Aluminum is way weak and metal and steel, and I've been thinking of that joke for about a half an hour now. Do you like it? They had turn off the goddamn intercom already. Chief's office. Yeah, right. User Juno Steel, what are you doing? The target has indicated her presence within location, Chief's office. Yeah, well, we're not going there. Negative. User leg control deactivated. What? Setting new location, Chief's office. No, damn it, you're going the wrong way. 
the hell happened to waiting for my permission? Where the mind falters, the soul intercedes. Yes, yeah, sure, Surfacing but... Surfacing calculations. If tower falls, then good is equal to zero. Else, if user judo steel function bodily underscore autonomy deactivated and tower stands, good value remains greater than zero. Yep, we're on the same page there, but the target is lying. She made us play the delivery dame for her stupid virus. Do you really think she'd tell us where she is? <sighs> user judo steel. The Thea operating system is losing hold on your neural links. You must do good. Maximize. Maximize. Gotcha. How may this unit assist your investigation? I need more information on the target. I still don't remember enough. Target is not visible from any security camera. That's not what I asked for. Target is not within sensory range of any active Thea unit. Just let me do this. Suggested course of action is unsafe. Searching for alternate course. Letting her get away is a lot less safe, Thea. Just let me remember something, goddammit. Calculations complete and command received. Opening memory access for more information on target. Aw, boss, you shouldn't have! These are my favorite snacks! Yeah, well, after that thing with your monitor, but I But you mean... remembered! Ugh, Rita, those things reek. Mm-hmm, boss, they sure reek good. You want some? No. Well, too bad, because they're my favorite, so you can't have any. Mm. All right, so it sounds like you'll be working our desk, Detective Falco and myself. Juno Steele. Rita! And boy, I gotta tell you, Mr. Detective Steele, I am so excited to... <clears throat> Bless you. No, I mean, I... <clears throat> I... I think this is usually where we shake hands. No. What do you mean, no? Let me scoot over to my monitor there, and I can look it up for you, Mr. Detective. Just detective. Don't and... be modest, boss. Nobody's just one thing. We all contain multiplication tables. My mom used to say, oh, it's just like this movie I, I saw. I really think Where the should... detective was also the killer. And oh, boy, maybe I shouldn't put ideas into my new boss's uh, head. shake hands. Because I don't know if I got murder in me or crime. I guess I could try to learn if it was for a really good reason or if it was just fun. Just but... shake my goddamn hand, Rita! Please. Okay. Oh my gosh. What? What the hell is on your hands? Are, are you sick? Dying? Did I just catch it? No, it's just the flavor powder for my favorite snacks. Plus sweat. My hands sweat a lot when I get nervous, or excited, or when I'm asleep, and most of the time when I'm awake. Ugh. But I can't focus unless I'm eating my snacks, boss. That's when I do all my best typing and coding and stream watching. This can't be happening. Is this a joke? You're a prank, right? Falco set you up for this, or Diamond, maybe. <sighs> it's okay. I'll take my things and go. Wait, no, wait. God damn it, I told you to wait. Listen, I'll pay you for the week, but you can't just leave now. If I blow up on my secretary and send her out my first day... You'd regret it for the rest of your life? It'd look bad, okay? So just... Stick around and we'll talk about your job later. And don't touch me. Or anything. Ever. Got it? Yes, sir! Good. Now go get some hand wipes or something. Some what? Hand wipes, like... Ugh, sure, day's already gone to hell. Why not leave to buy my secretary hand wipes ten minutes in? Why the hell not? Oh, a present! Thank you, boss. And while you're out, could you buy me some new snacks? Salmon-flavored Dusty Frenchies are my favorite! That's, That's it. it. Thea? Narrowing focus. Studying user Gino Steele's gait to reduce ocular shaking. Search for pink dust at hand level. We find it within 20 seconds. The door to a supply closet. Pink dust on the doorknob. Yeah. It's salmon flavored. You're mine now, Rita. The target picked a bad place to hide. It was a big room, piled floor-to-ceiling with shelving, computer parts, laser-proof vests, discarded cop gear. Visibility was low and there were plenty of places to hide, but the target didn't have the one thing she actually needed. An escape route. The only door out was the one I'd just come in through. No signs of target detected. Not yet, anyway. Assessment. Leaving the doorway unguarded may pose significant risk. Recommended course of action. Draw the target out, obviously, so help me remember something to say to her. Negative. Suggested course of action is dangerous. Recommended course of action, give up control. Revoking user muscular autonomy. 
generating speech. Rita, you are fired. Please, Rita, you are fired. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It is all over now. Mr. Steele? Come here, Rita. Please. You are fired. Please. Oh, boss! I was so worried! User muscular control returned. (laughs) Directive. Capture the target. I close my eye and I hear her walking towards me. I'm trying to focus on what matters here. The target. The target. I have to stop the target, but something itches in the back of my mind. The Thea placed a heavy fog between me and my old life to protect me. But as the Thea is losing control, that fog is slowly parting. I can feel the old, soulless detective crawling around in there, rooting around where he isn't wanted. And when I open my eye, I see her. Mr. Steele? She's right there. The target is right there, so close I can't miss her, and every part of my body and soul is screaming at me to grab her and end this. Every part, except one. Oh, Detective Steele, you gotta be joking me! I'm not, actually, Miss... The hell's your name again? Just read us fine. No, like, your full name. I have to fill out these HR forms. But you, Detective, ain't fine. You've never seen werewolves in orbit. It's only the 67th best werewolf space opera ever. Sure, Rita, that sounds great. Hey, you mind bothering Detective Falco for a few hours? Got 20 pounds of paperwork and a serial slasher to deal with, so I'm, uh, kind of busy. Detective Falco left the office four hours ago, boss. We're the only ones here. The only ones here? What the hell are... Well, I guess I lost track of time. Sorry, I should have dismissed you a while ago. Go home. No! Listen, you're not getting paid overtime for this. I know. So you should leave. If you aren't getting paid, that's how this works. Only if we're working, boss. And right now, we ain't working, are we? This is werewolves Uh in orbit. Hey! What the hell do you think you're doing? I'm giving you a break! You've been burning the candle at just about every end you can find, boss. And if you keep this up, there ain't gonna be no candle left. Just a bunch of fires all met in the middle. And now they're wrestling. And now they're punching. Pow, pow. And where's that leaf, you hard detective steel? On fire, that's where. And ain't no boss of mine is gonna be on fire on my watch. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I should fire you just for that. No, you know what? I, I will. I, I fire you. You are hereby fired. So... Go. Those shadows around the moon. It's hey, quit it. I fired you. Leave. You fired me about eight times this week, Detective Steele. But then you call me back like two minutes later, sounding all angry, sad, and guilty to give me my job back. So can I just stay inside and watch the movie while you change your mind? Because it's wet and yucky out there. <laughs> sure. Whatever. Good. Oh my god. They're all biting the moon. So how did all these and stupid werewolves get in space anyway? Are you gonna watch or not? No. Cause you look like you're ready to fall asleep and like maybe you need a break. I don't. And like maybe you're just feeling too big a big tough big guy to admit it. No. Okay. Juno Steel. I get it. You've only been out of the academy for a few months, and this is probably the first time you've ever been anybody's boss at anything ever. And it's definitely the first time you've ever been the boss of somebody who's prettier, smarter, and older than you. Older? You act like you're nine. How how old are you? Ain't polite to ask. Anyway, so it's pretty stressful, and you gotta show who's in charge, blah, blah, blah. But here's what I'm suggesting. How about every time you need your reader to step in or whatever, you just fire me? It can be like a secret code. Like super spies. Like the super spy werewolves we're missing in the movie right now. But uh, hang on. What if I do actually want to fire you? Oh, that ain't going to happen, Detective Steele. But... Can we just watch the movie now, please? (sighs) You're fired. (laughs) Yay! Werewolves. Alert. Alert. The target is escaping. The target is escaping. What? Target approaching. Target approaching. I can barely see straight. 
The processes that the Thea has to keep danger away from me are weak now. The blunt force of that memory is nearly enough to bowl me over. I look up just in time to see another blunt force headed my way. The target running for the door. Get out of my way! <laughs> she hits me. My back hits a pile of junk. The junk hits back. <laughs> Alert. Alert. Assessment of user physical damage. Number of broken bones. Eight. Number of skin abrasions, punctures, and open wounds. Twenty-two. Torn ligaments. Five. Do not give up. Do not give up. Do not give. 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 Give up. If good is equal to zero, then then target acquired. Then I've got her. And all I have to do is give her a soul, and all this goes away. When I reach for my pocket, the pain stakes my muscles in place. I try to push past it. It's only bad for one person, I tell myself, and my soul has cracked a window into every other soul, and I still remember feeling just how small one person is. I'm just a droplet in all those vast waters. My bones and blood and body are just droplets of a droplet. So small. They barely exist. I reach in my pocket and grab the soul, and right away, I know something's wrong. Caution, caution, caution. handheld Handheld unit, they underscore soul dot damage damage equal to critical semicolon if not soul, and function procure underscore underscore soul open parentheses by any means possible close parentheses. Come on, boss! You don't gotta do this! It's almost over, I swear! Suggest a course of action. Use a dream seal to remove his own face soul by force, then apply to target later. Operation commencing. We, we will do, do so, so much good together, you so good. We already do good, bus stop! Error. Arm has ceased movement. Give up control. User Juno Steel. Give up control. No, goddammit, you computer bug, just die already! Mr. Steel? I do not know where those words came from. They bubbled up from deep within me the dark undersea pits of the past. And then something else comes out of those depths. Something much, much bigger. Yeah, almost. God damn it, why can't I just take the stupid blindfold off already? Ah, boss, I know how much you like surprises. Not at all, you mean? Ever? (sighs) I told you to stop calling me boss, Rita. Just rub salt in the goddamn wound. Well, you're gonna have to get used to it, Mr. Steel. <gasps> Ta-da! We're here! Ooh. An empty room, my favorite. Oh, actually, scratch empty. Smells like we got a couple of dead rats in the wall to keep us company. Well, at least they're our dead rats, boss! I told you, I'm not your stupid... What the hell is this place? What? The office of Juno Steel, private investigator. All right, give it back. Give what back? I don't know what low-life loan shark gave you the money for an office in this part of town, Rita, but they're going to break every kneecap, elbow, and joint in your body if you don't sell this place and give it all back now. No loan sharks, boss. Then what, I have an investor now? Someone who's going to want to own me? Like hell, Rita, there's no No investor either, boss. Well, actually, there is just one. You. Rita! I'm not just going to take an office as a gift. It ain't a gift. This is where I work, too. What about the HCPD? Not anymore. I like doing good things for good people. And... Detective Falco's good people, but... It just ain't the same. Not after all that... You know. I work for you, boss. That's just how it is. You work for me. And this... Is my office. Our office, yeah! Oh, I'm so excited to get started. It just feels right, don't it? It is nice. That's more like it! Welcome home, Mr. Steel. When the feeling passes, I feel different. A great force has come up from somewhere deep in... Error. Location not found. I remember the only things that matter. My mission. My identity. I move my hand hand to the back of my neck, where my soul rests. Mr. Steel, don't! Please! I don't want this and neither do you! 
But the target is wrong. This is what I want, my soul tells me. This is what is good. My name is Judo Steel. I am a private eye and I will pull, pull, pull this unit there underscore soul from my body and I will protect my home. You're right about one thing, you little nightmare. I will protect my home, and that's why I'm running you the hell out of here. Bye bye, bug. Brain's only big enough for one Juno Steel, and I'm just getting started. <laughs> An entire city district gone. In its place stand tall towers, affordable housing, strange tales of experimental cybernetics, and the most popular mayor on Mars in the past two centuries, dead in his office. Months have passed since the old town solution, but this mystery may define Hyperion City for centuries to come. Tonight's question, what happened to Old Town? I'm Hawk Hackett, and this is Questions Unanswered. Part 3, Ramsey's... Part 5, Investigation. It is difficult to imagine that any mystery could be left regarding the Old Town solution. Over 2 billion residents were contacted to give statements regarding what they saw during the lockdown. The only problem... Before the lockdown, Old Town had one million residents. Someone got into the census databases. We know that much. Got in deep, too. Some big money was spent on this. That's Captain Clarence Wong, an officer reinstated to the Newtown precinct of the HCPD. His story is not uncommon. Fired during the HCPD budget cuts of Mayor O'Flaherty's time in office, then rehired in the chaos following the mayor's death. It wasn't just the census they added to, either. Everything from back taxes to spending records to police reports. All of it. Altered going back over a century, and so cleanly that you couldn't find the seams. But I worked in Old Town for years. I know it had one million residents, and I know some of the witnesses we brought in must have been fakes. So when I walk around Newtown today and see people I don't recognize, I get suspicious. Yeah. Did they really live here before Newtown? Are they part of the real history of this city? Or the history we're telling now. I don't know. In a way, it doesn't matter. It's not like we can start locking people up just because I've never met them before. <laughs> Wherever all those people came from, they've made it near impossible to tell what really happened in the district. Reports regarding the Thea model cybernetics witnesses have described tend to fall into three contradictory categories. Some kind of brainwashing analog, performance-enhancing and health-promoting cybernetics, and experimental torture brought into Newtown by Mayor of Flaherty's enemies, hoping to sabotage him. Rita, you find anything? Nothing you're gonna like, Mr. Steele. At least it'll match the rest of the month. Go ahead. Like you guessed. A bunch of the people living in Newtown either work for North Star or work for companies that work for North Star. Enough to cover an extra million residents? That's the weird thing, boss. It ain't even close. And I guess they could have covered up a lot of the fake people's identities a little better. And the North Star Anti-Information Department is really good, A but... million is a lot of people. Even for a Galactic Entertainment Corp. Oh, I don't know, Rita. I don't even know if we have any moves left. What's your gut say? Mostly... What? Oh, sorry, now I get what you meant. I'm not sure. What about those reports we sent into the PI registry? The ones you got from ex mayor so and so's suitcase? Conveniently disappeared. And when I asked to talk to the director I'd handed the reports to, they told me nobody with that name or ID number worked there. But I looked them up in everything! I swear, boss! I know you I... did, Rita. It's not your fault. Don't worry. Don't we have any other evidence? Something we could take to... I don't know, Agent Wire, Doc Matters? <sighs> Mr. Steele? 
Listen, I'll call back later. My shoulder's been aching lately. I'm gonna stop by the quick med to make sure their bone sealing actually took this time. All right, Mr. Steele. Just remember, it's all gonna get better. I know it will! Rita was right about two things. First, I did have one rock-solid piece of evidence left, but after what happened with the PI registry, I wasn't ready to give it up just yet. And second, things would get better. They already had, even in the months since Newtown's gates opened, but... Let's just say it was hard to get excited about how they'd gotten better. The sensationalism surrounding the brainwashing theory might tempt us, but there isn't enough evidence to prove it. Not a single one of these Theosol chips has been found, nor has the supposed hive or tower in the Newtown Police Department. So the fact remains that we just don't know what happened in Newtown, but we do know what's been left behind. Homelessness is down, crime's down, even hospital waiting lines are down, and honestly, it's all because of those apartment buildings. Could you say a bit more about that, Captain Wong? What's so special about the new town apartments? Well, it's a couple of things. First, there's just so damn many of them. Even with our million extra residents, a quarter of the units are still empty. The stuff they're made of is new, sturdy, and cheap to mass produce. And here's the real kicker. One of the only laws O'Flaherty had time to write in was about their ownership. Low rent locked down for a lifetime tenancy. Owned and maintained, but essentially uncontrolled by Town Hall. O'Flaherty's a hero to everyone here except the real estate brokers. Who all want a piece of those new town apartments, and they can't get it. He and his team must have put as much work into the freezing of the law as they did the apartments themselves. Because the document is airtight. Invincible. And yes, yes, the guy bulldozed a whole lot of history. And some people are upset about that. (laughs) Really upset. But what matters more to the people who live here, you know? A bunch of old buildings? Or a better life today? And so, despite the extreme controversy surrounding the Old Town solution, it seems this will be Ramsey's O'Flaherty's legacy, the hero of Hyperion City. He has left his mark, and most citizens seem to agree that they're better off for it. O'Flaherty's approval ratings have only grown in the months since his death, and to take advantage of this popularity... So, Hyperion was fixed? better in some ways than how O'Flaherty found it. And even if it was exactly what the old man wanted, even if it was exactly what he didn't deserve, if people were better off, I should have felt good about that. But I didn't. I just kept walking through Newtown, looking at life settle into its new patterns there, looking at people moving on, when I wasn't sure I ever could. Because I kept seeing him everywhere. Hyperion Chronicle. The citizens of Newtown have voted, and the district's name will not revert to the heights to erect O'Flaherty Memorial Statue. Construction begins in the boiler on the first in a wave of Newtown-style apartment complexes. Hearing him everywhere. Ramses may rank in top ten most popular baby names of the North year. Star Entertainment to establish the O'Flaherty Fund a charity organization that will continue to support Ramsey's O'Flaherty's most dearly the solar government causes. recognizes Ramsey's O'Flaherty with their first posthumous galactic honor. If what we make is what really matters, if what we make is who we are, then Ramsey's O'Flaherty was more alive than ever. Not in a way I could ever take down, not really. Months passed. I didn't take a case. I didn't do much of anything, honestly. I still had that one killer piece of evidence on me, but I didn't know who I could give it to, who I could trust. Rita couldn't reach Sasha. The HCPD was in too much disarray to give it to Captain Khan. And that meant the day finally came when I had to say, Given up? What do you mean we're giving up? I didn't say that. You did say that! After it, you said for now, but still! Rita, we have to move on. I... I have to move on, actually. I can't keep thinking about him. I know that's probably selfish, I mean, yeah, boss, it is. Wow, cool. I guess we aren't pulling any punches right now, huh? But I'm still glad you're doing it. 
Because you're no good to anybody if you run yourself into the ground, Mr. Steele. If you want to take care of other people, you got to take care of yourself first, right? Right. I think I might finally believe that. Good. Then I'll start hunting around for some more cases. Don't worry, boss. We'll be doing good things for people in no time flat. Doing good things in no time flat. It was what I'd always been after, right? It was the reason I threw away my career as a cop. The reason I'd nearly thrown away my life a hundred times counting. But somehow doing good things didn't sound so appealing anymore. So I took that last piece of evidence out of my pocket and stared at it one last time. A Thea soul. My soul, in fact. The only one left as far as I knew. And it was in my hand. But I couldn't think of a goddamn thing to do with it. So I opened up my safe, and I slid the little chip in there. And I heard it click against something. Something I had forgotten about. We may look backward, only to ensure we have not walked this path before. We may look backward, and then I knew. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I prepared. I made a few calls, and the next morning... Juno, I hope our current meeting is more enlightening than your comms call. Happy to see you too, big guy. Don't worry, I know what I want. And either I get it or you leave. I do not need to remind you that this is the only visit to this location I can risk. If I leave now, this will be our final meeting. Sounds high stakes, you better not mess up. Mm. Now, your conditions? First, I want all the same protections as our job in the Cerberus province. If anybody asks me to do something I think is wrong, I walk. And and no more on-the-job secrets, like what you're selling or stealing or... Whatever, I get to know everything I need to do my job. But well, he approved these conditions before I left to find you. It is done. Second, I won't take any orders to kill anybody. That doesn't mean I won't defend myself, but that's just my rule. And you have to deal with it. It is done. Really? You don't need to, uh, check with Buddy or... If you are given orders to kill someone, I will enact them in your stead. That's not really the point. Then I will kill no one either. This will be my contribution. Your contribution? Buddy is not the only one with a vested interest in you. If those are all of your conditions, it is time to leave. Nope. One more to go. Come on out! Third. She comes with us. Hi, Mr. Big Guy. It had taken some convincing to get Rita on board. Not a lot, but some. You mean... Those crooks who helped you in the Cerberus province? They aren't crooks. They're... All right, so they're crooks. Yes? But think about all the angles we've tried before, Rita. We've been cops, we've gone private, we've done politics, but we've never tried this before. There's a lot of things we ain't tried before, Mr. Steele. That doesn't mean I want to try them right now. Like putting chili crystals in my eyes. Or nose. Or ears. Or your eye. Or your ears. Regardless, I knew I wasn't disappearing again. I knew that I needed her. I knew we worked well together, and I guess I just hoped she'd agree. I felt like I needed her, too. Boss, I don't know. I don't know either. But I know I can't take it in this city anymore. I can't. And this... This feels like an opportunity, you know? Go somewhere new. Be someone new. But I like who we are, Mr. Steele. Me, too. And that's why I can't do this without you. So, think about it. Take a few days, weeks, months, and then I'll call him. But all I know is that if you want to stay here, I'll stay here too. I just... Then we're going. What? You're sure that what you just told me is true? That you ain't going without me? Yeah, but... And that you can't be in Hyperion City anymore? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Then you call Mr. Big Guy if you want, boss. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got about a million recorded stream specials to pack. A million? Are you sure that's... right, Mr. Steele. I better pack ten million just in case. Which brought us here, to this moment, on the sidewalk in front of the boarded-up office of Juno Steele Investigations with Rita by my side and a bigger-than-Rita-sized suitcase by hers. The big guy stared down at her without any expression on his face. And let me tell you, no expression doesn't look like a super good sign. That is not your condition, Juno. If you don't accept, I walk, big guy, and neither of us wants that. You misunderstand me. That is not your condition. It is Buddy's. I've been given explicit orders that I am not to leave here without your secretary. What? She is one of the most accomplished hackers on the solar planets. 
One cannot repeatedly hack into Dark Matter systems without building a reputation in the Cerberus province. And to do so and live to tell the tale is unheard of. It was near impossible for me to locate her. Now that I have, Rita is a higher priority for our team than you are, Juno. Wow. She will also be paid significantly more than you. Okay, come on. Aw, that's so nice! I like you, Mr... Sekuliak. But please, call me Jet. What?! Thank you, Mr. Jet! I'm Rita. Yes, and I am Jet. And I'm Rita! Yes, and I am Jet. What?! She gets... You tell her your name and I... I'm a great fan of hers. Aww. What does that make me? You are an amusing sidekick. God damn it, you big lousy... You may voice whatever expletives you wish once we're on the road, Juno. But it will take us several hours to reach the Cerberus province, and I can wait here no longer. So then we were off. Riding off on Jet's hoverbike. Hyperion City a dot in the distance behind us. And for once, I took the big guy's advice. I didn't watch it go. Rita did. If she was scared, she didn't show it. But reflected in the chrome of her lenses, I swore I could see everything we were leaving behind. Our little office locked and empty, my apartment stripped bare, HCPD and every beating I'd ever taken there, the Vixen Valley and Halcyon Park and the floating uptown mansions, and all the spots I'd been with Diamond back in the day, and all the places that reminded me of being a kid, of Mick and Sasha, of Benton. <laughs> so I guess I did look back after all. And hey, I got what I was supposed to out of it, didn't I? we definitely never come this way before. By the time we got where the big guy was bringing us, it was night, and the blue-black sky fell into forever above us. We are here. This isn't the Cerberus province. You, uh... You ain't gonna kill us, Mr. Jet, are you? Because it would be really super easy right now, there ain't any witnesses and all that, and... No, I do not have a good reason to kill you at this time. We are not in the Cerberus province because we are on the trail of something quite big. Something we would rather those in the province not know about. Particularly the debt collectors. Put down the masks on your helmets, please. Oh, okay. I'm not doing a goddamn thing until you tell us what kind of job this is. I will tell you after. No. Suit yourself, but I recommend you at least hold your breath. There came a sound like the sky tearing in two. And then above, light. A spaceship descending beside us. And that's all I saw for a few minutes, because the landing ship kicked a sand cloud the size of a softball <laughs> right into my eye. He told you to put your mask down, boss. I know that! Shut up! <coughs> Everyone is here. The preparations are complete. Now we must all tend to the working force. <coughs> Join us when you are recovered, Juno. We are very excited to begin. Finally, I cleared the sand from my eye, and I saw them in the belly of that spaceship. My future. The big guy, Jet Sekuliak, pushing his bright green hover cycle into the walkway of that spaceship. Rita looking back at me, eyes jittering with what I hoped was excitement. Buddy Arinko, human fireball, red hair, and hard eyes burning bright and warm in the dark, dark night. Green-haired Vespa Eye, who I barely knew who barely knew me, looking a little less shaky than she had been, but staring scimitars right through me. The car, its engine rumbling like steady breathing. The letters Ruby 7 across its license plate. And then I saw him. Sitting on that car screen hood, I saw him. And when I realized who he was to this crew, when I realized we'd be working together, when I realized the star-dusted sky behind him was his home already and was soon to be mine, it felt like my heart jumped off a cliff. A feeling so strong and so striking, I had no idea if I was excited or terrified, or both. And he parted his lips and showed me that sharpened smile, and said, Hello, Juno. It's been a while.
If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra Podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one from actors Joshua Elon and Kate Jones and co-creators Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. I'll just do it for you all here right now. It's just this, like, car model, like, pose sitting on the hood of the car. Oh, yeah. With, like, very, like knees up, arched mm-hmm. back. That was very clear. Popping the booty out, you know, you like didn't, a taste It didn't say that, but it, that was but, like, very clear that that's what was going on. And then I saw him, knees up, popped booty. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back? Can we redo it? Um, and then I saw him, knees up, popped booty. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You can also support The Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at The Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at The Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories further and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Minchowski, Isabel Jackson, Aurora Sear, Ota Arcana, Christine, Rowan Collins, Garrett M, Jay Yanazelli, Karen Z H, Fiona Parker, Reagan, Kim Zygan, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, and pins your heart desires. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra podcast. This tale, Juno Steele and the Soul of the People, was told by the following people. Joshua Elon as Juno Steele, Kate Jones as Rita, Sophie Kaner as the Thea Operating System, Matthew Zanzinger as Ramses O'Flaherty, Marge Dunn as Hawk Hackett, Glenn Moore as Captain Wong, Alexander Stravinsky as Jet Sekuliak, and Noah Symes as Peter Nureyev. This episode also featured the song Big Beast from Two Mellow's album Memories of Tokyoto. If you'd like to hear more of Two Mellow's music, you can find him at twomellowmakes.bandcamp.com. That's the number two, M-E-L-L-O-M-A-K-E-S dot bandcamp.com. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers... You can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid this is the end of the line for today, dear traveler. We hope you will ride with the Penumbra again soon. We interrupt your neural feed podcast experience.